This is the Bell 407 GXI, a much more technologically advanced version of the renowned Bell 407. The original 407 was designed to offer a more spacious cabin, improved performance, and enhanced versatility compared to the Long Ranger. Incorporating a four-bladed rotor system, the helicopter presented a smoother flight experience and became widely adopted for a plethora of applications, from emergency medical services to utility and corporate transport. Finally, in 2018, Bell introduced the 407 GXI, a model that sought to integrate cutting-edge technology and optimize performance parameters. With a Rolls-Royce engine equipped with dual-channel FADEC and an updated Garmin G1000H NXI avionics suite, the 407 GXI represented a new pinnacle in Bell's single-engine light helicopter offerings and brought forth improvements in speed, range, and overall performance while introducing features that enhanced safety and operational efficiency. But is it really a worthy successor of the 407? Stay with us until the end of the video because here is everything you need to know about the Bell 407 GXI. Stepping inside, you'll immediately notice the ergonomic design. The cabin measures 5 feet or 1.52 meters in width and 4.2 feet or 1.28 meters in height, providing ample space for up to seven passengers in addition to the pilot. The clamshell rear doors offer easy access to the rear seats and are particularly advantageous for medical or utility applications. For a single-engine helicopter, the Bell 407 GXI provides a very well-balanced compromise between comfort and operational costs. The seats are made of premium materials and come with four-way adjustable lumbar support. The default seating arrangement is generally one pilot and six passengers in a 2 plus 2 plus 3 configuration, but customization options allow for different seating arrangements and even the possibility of adding a co-pilot seat. Noise reduction features like acoustic paneling also contribute to the cabin's comfort, reducing the decibel levels to a more tolerable range for passengers. The cabin also comes with adjustable LED lighting, providing adequate illumination for night flights or low-light conditions. Ample window space ensures that passengers get a panoramic view. Storage options are somewhat limited, which is a point to consider if you're looking to carry a lot of cargo. The baggage compartment provides about 16 cubic feet or 450 liters of storage space, accessible through an external door. While adequate for personal luggage or small equipment, it may not suffice for specialized operations that require carrying bulky items. One aspect that some might find lacking is the absence of a pressurized cabin. While this isn't generally a concern for the altitudes at which most light helicopters operate, it does restrict the aircraft's operational ceiling to some extent. However, the climate control system is robust offering both heating and air conditioning to maintain a comfortable cabin environment regardless of external weather conditions. Last but not least, safety features in the cabin are robust. Seats are equipped with four-point harnesses and fire extinguishers and first aid kits are typically standard. Depending on your customization, you could also opt for additional safety features like smoke hoods or life vests. Now, let's step into the cockpit. The main components of the integrated avionics systems include two 10.4-inch GDU 1050H high-definition displays and two GIA 64H integrated avionics units. The system additionally features a GEA 71HB engine and airframe unit, a GSU 75 air data and attitude heading reference system, and GMU 44 magnetometer, a GMA 350HC audio system, and a GTX 345 RES Mode S transponder. The standard configuration of the flight deck includes synthetic vision and initial installation of the HTAWs and navigation database. New features of the NXI include ADSB-enabled target trend and terminal traffic, wireless cockpit connectivity, HSI mapping on the primary flight display, and other capabilities. Two card slots are available for data exchange tasks, such as flight planning, database uploading, and flight data downloads. There's also an optional Flightstream 510 wireless gateway, which comes in the form of an MMC card and installs in one of the slots. Flightstream 510 allows the NXI system to stream real-time information between avionics and compatible mobile devices running ForeFlight or Garmin Pilot. This can include two-way flight plan transfer, traffic sharing, weather, GPS, and backup attitude information. 
The option also enables Garmin's database concierge to wirelessly transfer aviation databases from the Garmin Pilot app to the G1000HNXI system, which is a much simpler way of updating information. Pilots can prepare a flight plan on Garmin Pilot on an iPad or Android device or ForeFlight, and then wirelessly load the plan into the aircraft's avionics. The pilot can also check for any database updates and then download them to the mobile device. Pre-flight time can be reduced as the database concierge can upload the database updates and sync transfers directly with all of the installed displays. Both the PFD and MFD can do the other's tasks. The displays accept video signals from external sources, including the GXI's tail rotor camera. Optional imaging devices include multi-sensor camera thermal imaging systems used for parapublic missions. The system can synchronize with the fuel quantity indicator instead of relying upon pilot manual entry. On the same page, the left side of the screen calculates and displays longitudinal and lateral aircraft CG. A hover performance page shows the pilot the real-time or pre-flight planning power needed to hover out of ground effect or in ground effect when outside air temperature and altitude are in the certified envelope. The page includes a hover power indicator and hover performance display section. The hover power indicator depicts the power required at the current weight, OAT, pressure altitude and wind condition to hover OGE or IGE. The power situation indicator displays predicted power required for hovering at the pilot's entered destination aircraft weight, OAT, pressure altitude and wind condition. An oral alert tone sounds when any of the helicopter's engine parameters are operating in a time-limited range, and the alert occurs before encountering an engine exceedance. This is especially beneficial for missions where it is common for the pilot to be operating at high power settings while looking outside. A weather radio data link, data link management unit, an Iridium voice and data transceiver, and the Garmin GTS 800 traffic advisory system are among the optional features. Now let's talk about the engine, performance specifications, and how it flies. The Bell 407 GXI is powered by a FADEC controlled Rolls-Royce M250C47E4 turboshaft engine with a TBO of 2,000 hours, producing 813 shaft horsepower. The Rolls-Royce M250 series has long been a staple in helicopter propulsion, and the C47E4 variant continues that legacy with improved efficiency and operational ease. The engines allow a maximum rate of climb per minute of 2,000 feet or 610 meters and a maximum cruising altitude of 19,000 feet or 5,790 meters. The aircraft has a maximum cruise speed of 133 knots with an average hourly fuel burn of 42 gallons or 160 liters. When you combine this rate with its total usable fuel capacity of 145 gallons or around 550 liters, you get a maximum range of about 324 nautical miles, which is roughly 373 miles or 600 kilometers. Last but certainly not least, the useful load stands at approximately 2,350 pounds or 1,065 kilograms. The base purchase price for a new Bell 407 GXI is $18 million, and the charter price is estimated at $1,400 to $2,000 per hour. Naturally, prices will vary depending on availability, fuel prices, ground fees, and more. While the annual fixed cost is roughly $150,000 to $250,000, the average hourly operating cost is estimated at $700 to $1,000. Thank you for staying with us till the end. Here are two videos you can watch next. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.